Sometimes we are given a feasible solution to a linear programming problem, and we wonder if it is an optimal solution. Of course, you can solve the linear programming problem from scratch and check if the solution that is given has the same objective function value as the optimal value. If it is, then it is an optimal solution. Otherwise, it is not. But if we are already given a potential solution, we don't really want to do things from scratch. The question is, if we are given a candidate for optimal solution, can we somehow use that information? Can we avoid doing things from scratch? Let's look at an example. We're given the solution x1, x2 equal to 2, 1. Well, first check that this is a feasible solution. So in the first constraint, we have 2 times 2 plus 1, that's 5. So the first constraint is satisfied. The second constraint, I have 2 plus 4 times 1, that's 6. So again, the second constraint is satisfied. And 2 is obviously at least 1. So all the constraints are satisfied by 2, 1. So this is a feasible solution. Now the question is, are there any other solutions that will have a better objective function value than what is given by 2, 1? In this case, the objective function value is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. If this were an optimal solution, then there exists a non-negative linear combination of the constraints that gives the inequality x1 plus x2 greater than equal to 3. Why is that? Well, this is something that we have done a few videos ago. If you know what the optimal value is, then there is a linear combination of these inequalities that will give us the inequality that has left-hand side equal to objective function and right-hand side equal to optimal value. So what we are trying to do is, are there non-negative values y1, y2, y3, such that, well, if you take this combination using these y values, we'll get x1 plus x2 on the left-hand side and 3 on the right-hand side. So we want, so we're not sure, we wonder if it is possible to find y1, y2, y3 such that 2y1 plus y2 plus y3 so this is the coefficient of x1 equal to 1 and y1 plus 4y2 equal to 1 and y1, y2, y3 greater than equal to 0 and the right hand side is 5y1 plus 6y2 plus y3 equal to 3 so the question is uh, can we find these y? Uh, if we solve the system here, the solution is y1 equal to 3 over 7, y2 equal to 1 over 7, and y3 equal to 0. So as you can see, all three values are non-negative. That means such a linear combination of these constraints exists to give us the inequality with the object function on the left hand side and the optimal value on the right hand side. So again, 3 over 7 times the first inequality times 1 over 7 times the second inequality will give us x1 plus x2 on the left hand side. So we can check that. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6, 6 over 7 plus 1 over 7 is 1. 3 over 7 plus 4 over 7 is also 1. Now on the right hand side, we have 15 over 7 plus 6 over 7, that's 21 over 7 which is 3. In this case, we didn't do too much work to show that x1, x2 equal to 2, 1 is an optimal solution because all we needed to do was to solve the system which had a unit solution. Now, of course, you might think that there was a bit of work that we skipped that I didn't show you it's to solve this system. But this is just a 3 by 3 system and it had a unit solution. So it wasn't something that was too difficult. Whereas if you try to solve this minimization problem using one of the methods that we have seen, whether it's graphical or turning this into a system of inequalities, it will have involved a bit of work. Now there's one thing that I want to point out, is that the value y3 is 0. So what this is saying is that we don't really need the third inequality. Now it would be a good exercise uh, to graph these inequalities. So you should now try to graph 
these inequalities and see what they look like. But here I would like to point out that uh, the reason why y3 is 0, and in fact we can actually say y3 is 0 right away, is because while x1 is 2 and on the right hand side is 1, that's strictly greater, right? So if I call this x1 star x2 star, x1 star is actually strictly greater than 1, right? whereas these are all equal. The thing is, when you take this linear combination of these constraints, now let's work with the star. So I, I'm having y1 times 2. So let me write it this way. So now I'm having 2y1 plus y2 plus y3 times x1 star plus y1 plus 4y2 times x2 star. And on the right hand side, I have 5y1 plus 6y2 plus y3. Now, we know that these are both equal to 1 because in the end, uh, this combination here will give us the objective function on the left hand side. But if this is the objective function evaluated x1 star x2 star, then this better be equal to 3, right? Because if you plug in 2 comma 1 into the objective function, that is equal to 3. But now, what does that also mean? Well, the right hand side, we know that we are seeking a combination that will give us 3 on the right hand side. So what that means is the left hand side here has to equal to the right hand side here. And the only way this can happen is when we don't take the third inequality because essentially this is going to be an equality. Okay, the left hand side, you know, if we use all these values y1, y2, y3, satisfying these constraints, has to equal the right hand side, which is 3. But this is just a linear combination of these three constraints here. So if both sides are equal, then all three must be equal, but the last one cannot be equal if we take a non-zero multiple of this. So the only way the left-hand side can equal to the right-hand side is if we don't use the third constraint at all. If we take any positive multiple of this third constraint, we will never get the left-hand side here equal to the right-hand side. And this is the option that tells us if you look at the primal problem and plug in your candidate solution, if any constraint holds with strict inequality, then we will not need to use this constraint in the construction of the inequality get overbounds the objective function with the optimal value. This problem is called complementary slackness. We will see more examples in later videos.